Hello, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here on Good Afternoon Ghana. My name is Aldo Moore. It's a pleasure having you on a beautiful um, Wednesday afternoon. Now, this afternoon, Good Afternoon Ghana would be putting a special spotlight on a, one of the fast or growing, or fastest growing political movements in this country. It's a political movement that has promised to change, to reform, and to revolutionize the political landscape of this country. It was, it's actually a movement that started sometime last year in September by a man who was formerly with the New Patriotic Party but broke away and decided to form this, this movement with the intention of making sure that we have one Ghana. Now, the movement has been up to all sorts of things, trying to get as many Ghanaians as possible to join it. It's like a moving train. And um, the leader has been meeting various groups, have been meeting various associations to sell um, the message of the movement to them. But just quite recently, we also heard about an alliance which has been formed by the movement for interest, no, actually national interest movement, sorry, which is led by uh, the, the uh, venerable Dr. Abu Sakara Foster. And that in itself was given all kinds of interpretations. I'm saying that uh, Alan Tremating is from an alliance with Abu Sakara Foster, which has been dismissed, etc., etc. But we're going to look at this alliance and really what significance or what importance or what impact it's actually going to bring to the movement. And then more importantly, where do things stand as far as the movement is concerned? Um, they sort of have gone a bit under the radar. Maybe I'm the one who's thinking like that. There's a lot that's happening that I don't know, but they've appeared to have gone a little bit on the radar. And if it's indeed the case, what is it that they have been up to? We'll be finding out. And then the leader and founder of that movement has also made some statement about what the majority Christians in this country should be looking out for in deciding who they want to vote for, among, any, among other some of the issues that have come up. So that is where our spotlight is going to be this afternoon. But... Before we do that, on Monday, we had a very, very interesting conversation here about Yendi. Yeah, the new patriotic party has suffered some kind of a stalemate or some kind of an impasse because the primaries in that constituency sort of hit a snack. There was some confusion that marred the electoral process, and so the electoral commission actually asked for a rerun. Um, but the National Executive Committee of that party, I'm talking about the NPP, on Tuesday, as we said, and was confirmed that a national organizer of the party, the party's national executive committee yesterday met and they have made a decision as to whether indeed the, the status quo would remain, which is the Farouk acclaimed and confirmed as the winner of the elections or something's going to change. I'll bring you that breaking news that I'll be sharing the outcome of that national executive committee to you. And then we'll be speaking to um, one of the contestants. Indeed, the reason we're speaking to her is because she's actually released a statement She's released a statement in reacting or in reaction to how she feels or what she thinks about the way things have been handled by the party. So stay tuned in. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss this. I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. This is Good Afternoon Ghana. My name is Aldo Moro, and uh, it's a pleasure, as I did indicate, for joining us on Good Afternoon Ghana. We have two very important conversations to have, and actually, the main one has to do with a focus and the spotlight we intend to bring on, uh, an, on the movement for change, which has been in the news for some time now. They have been very busy forming alliances here and there. As we speak this afternoon, the leader and the, the founder of that party has been, he's actually meeting a group. I'm sure that um, when I'm, you know, shortly joined by Aaron Duke Sasu Esquire, he's a private legal practitioner and also the spokesperson for the group, he'll bring us up to speed on what this afternoon's meeting is all about and so on and so forth. There's quite a number of issues that we're going to be talking about as far as the movement for change is concerned. But before we do that, as I did indicate, we have some breaking news for you, some breaking story for you. And the breaking story is that the National Executive Committee of the New Patriotic Party has made a decision as far as the Yendi impasse is concerned. I want you to watch this. 
National Executive Committee in a statement confirmed the incumbent Farouk Ali Mahama as its parliamentary candidate for the December 7, 2024 polls. This was some three months after the controversial parliamentary primaries on Saturday, January 27, in the Yendi constituency, a situation which led to a decision to suspend the announcement of the results. But, despite her strong disagreement with the decision, Hajia Abibata Zakaria emphasized her respect for the party's leadership, including President Nanado Dankwa Kufu Ado and presidential candidate Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, as well as all members of the party. Hajia Abibata Zakaria highlighted concerns regarding fairness and the adherence to the rule of the natural justice in the party's decision making process, asserting that she was not treated fairly. She acknowledged the overwhelming support she received from the delegates and constituents during the parliamentary elections held on January 27, 2024, which was unfortunately marred by infractions and electoral more practices. Even at the face of all the disappointments, she urged her campaign team members, supporters and sympathizers to accept the party's decision and extend their support to the new candidate selected by NEC. However, Metro TV can confirm that some supporters of Hajia Abibata Zakaria have wholly rejected NEC's decision, describing it as unfair and a threat to the party in the constituency. They strongly believe that a rerun of the January 27 primaries would have sufficed. Unfortunately for us, we have been joined by um, Hajia Habibata Shani Zakaria, who's joined us to uh, tell us about um, the statement that she's actually issued. Hajia, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us on Good Afternoon Ghana. Um, Hajia, can you, could you please speak up so I can hear you, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please, I can. Thank you very much for joining us on Good Afternoon Ghana. Now, Th thank you very much for accepting to talk to us, madam. Thank you, Muru. Right. Good afternoon to your cherished listeners. And first of all, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak to right. you too. Right, thank and you. And your cherished listeners. Wonderful. Um, let me read a statement which we have we have been um thank you yes just just hold on a second i just want to read just the first paragraph of it um so that you can confirm to us whether indeed you're the one who authored this statement it's very important to us because we're living you know fake news times of fake news and so i just want to read just the first part um it says immediate release uh, first of all it says hajia habibata shani mahama zakaria for immediate release 9th um april 2024 and it says i've noted with surprise and sadness the decision of the neck of our party to declare my opponent alaji farouk ali muhammad the parliamentary candidate for the 2024 parliamentary elections for the yindi constituency can you confirm that indeed this is coming from you Authored the release. You, you can confirm this is coming from you. Yes, I can confirm that the statement is coming from me. Okay. Why have you found it necessary or deemed it necessary to issue the statement? Yeah, as a matter of fact, the statement was sent to me via social media on WhatsApp. So when I saw the decision of the neck, first of all, I was surprised. I looked at it. And I thought that I had to respond to it as soon as possible as a patriot. Hold on. Um, there's something I need to get clearly. You're saying that as one of the parties to the, and I'm using conflict here advisedly, as one of the parties to the conflict, you were not officially communicated. You had to actually find or discover the statement on social media? Yes, I wasn't contacted prior to the decision making and after the decision. And up to this minute, nobody has contacted me to communicate to me officially what the decision was at NEC. Wow, that's interesting. So you got wind of the statement and you decided to respond to the content of the statement. Yes, I had to respond as a patriot. Having been born from a UP tradition, I've been a patriot all my life, and I'll continue to be a patriot, yeah. So, in summary, what are you communicating through the statement? So, what I am communicating through this statement is that I expected the party to have followed the rule of natural justice, 
which they did not follow, what I expected the party to have done was to at least call me to give me some fair hearing as to what happened. It never happened. I was told a three-member committee was formed and they were supposed to look into the matter. That was the communication that got to me. So I met two individuals separately of the committee and the agreement was that they were going to meet as a committee and then call me to engage me. That never happened until yesterday's meeting. So the first time I saw the decision was a social media correspondence where a friend sent it to me. That was the first time I saw the decision. So quick two takeaways from this. One, nobody actually heard your side of the story. That's number one. Yes, number two... Yes you were not officially communicated to as an, as, 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 um, as an important party to this conflict. And yes, then number yes. three, you actually found it on social media and you've decided yes. to respond to it just to, you know, state the fact that you've not been treated fairly because you yes. believe and that... and that is exactly why I meant in my statement by saying that I wasn't treated fairly. Okay. At least, the least I expected from the party was some small respect given to me because when two people are in a conflict, you treat them equally. That is the least I expected from the party. I see. Now, just two quick things. I spoke to Nana Buachi on Monday. Now, he said two things to me. He said... The three-member committee were not necessarily meant to investigate the umpires because I was, I was also under the impression that they were meant to investigate. He says, no, they were not. They were only so meant to I communicate. I wasn't in the meeting, in the first net meeting they held. Okay. I wasn't there. But what was communicated to me as a person was to have met the three-member committee, which I never met. I met two individuals of the committee one-on-one, -on -one, and each of them, I went to them and presented my facts to them with regards to documents and evidence on the pen drive as to what transpired in the primaries. But they did not call me voluntarily. I reached out to them voluntarily, and none of them communicated any decision to me from the last NEC meeting until yesterday. Interesting. The second issue is this. Nana, Nana B tells me that the party was only good because I asked about what sort of information the party was going to rely on in coming to a final decision as to what the way forward is. He said two things, the police report and the, the report of the electoral commission, just the two. Yes. So, so um, I don't know what the national organizer meant by that. Okay. But when you look at our party guidelines... The party guidelines that were issued prior to our elections, that was issued on 24th January 2024. When you read the statement after the first two paragraphs, the first statement really indicated that the EC shall have the sole responsibility of carrying out the election. So some of these things could have, done, could have been done if the party was, had arranged the election without the involvement of the EC. So it is therefore not clear to me why the national organizer will choose to disregard the EC's recommendation and at the same time will rely on sections of the police reports, which was there to protect law and order and not to supervise the election. I see. That's, that's, that's quite interesting. Now, um, just before you take leave of us, you have asked for unity in the party. In fact, when you read the at the tail end of the statement, you've asked for unity within the party. You said you would also accept any responsibility that's been, that will be assigned you um, in order Please, for the party to chop. I didn't get that. I read, a, I'm just reading a portion of your, of your statement. Uh, let me just do this uh, just quickly before. I just want to read verbatim what is contained in your, in your statement. Um, so there's a portion here that says that, um, so you're saying that, um, I would avail myself for any tax that would be assigned to me to ensure that the MPP wins both the presidential and parliamentary contest in the Yendi constituency during the 2024 elections. Is that to suggest that even though you're not happy with the way things have panned out, how things have played out, the fact that you've not been treated fairly, you're still saying that party interest first? Is that what it's, is that what it's supposed to mean? That is what it means exactly. As I indicated earlier on, I'm a patriot and I'll continue to be a patriot. Being a patriot means that no matter what decision comes from the party by a few people, 
you don't let that distract you from being a patriot. So for that matter, I'm a patriot and I continue to be a patriot and I'll be focused. Now, just finally before you go, I'm just curious and, 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 and I'm just, I just want to know whether you know. Do you know if your other colleague has, has been written to? So for instance, did the party seek his input into um, in, in, in coming up with the final decision? Whether was he part of the meeting that finally deliberated on this matter? And were you... Yeah, were you, I wasn't were you... part of the next meeting yesterday, but okay, what but I you... was told hold, about hold on, hold, was just, that just the was... first next meeting he right. was part, okay. and yesterday's meeting he was part as well. He was part of yesterday's meeting? Yes, please. But under normal circumstances, are you guys supposed to be part of the next meetings? I am not a NEC member, and I don't know in which capacity he was there at the meeting. But what I know is that I'm not a NEC member, and looking at the constitution of NEC, I, don't, I can't tell whether he is a member or not. I don't know about that. Aja, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much, Steve. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, maybe to be fair to Alaja Ali, uh, Farouk Mahama, Josiah, if you can get through to him. Uh, let's speak to him briefly and find out whether indeed he was part of yesterday because to be fair to him, once I just said she's, she's aware that he was part of the next meeting, I just think it would be fair that we speak to him. If you're able to get through to him, we can just speak to him for just a few minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah or nay, he was there in what capacity, etc. And then we can take it We can take it from there. But let me just, uh, whilst we're waiting to see whether we can get through to Farouk, um, al Haj Farouk Ali Muhammad, who's the MP for Yendi and the man who's just been confirmed as the parliamentary candidate for the party in that constituency, once we're able to get through it, we'll speak to him. But in the meantime, let's get to find out what the Afrofronto movement has been up to. Um, Duke um, Aaron Sasu is here. He is, uh, he's actually a private legal practitioner and also the spokesperson of the group. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank it's you. a pleasure having you. Thank you. It's been a while. That's true. Yeah. That's how's, true. Um, <laughs> how's the Afrofronto doing? How's the butterfly movement? Afrofronto uh, is, is much more energetic than you can ever imagine. Okay. Uh, stronger than before. Right. Uh, it's building alliances. Right. Um, embarking on market tours, engaging our mothers and fathers in the okay. markets across the country. Right. It's engaging in a tertiary invasion program, focusing on how young people can become pivotal okay. within the process. But before we engage, it's important that I say a good afternoon to Ghanaians <laughs> and uh, happy Idil uh, to, right. to our brothers and sisters, Muslims. Mm. Uh, I've been engaging some of my friends this morning right. and I've been sharing in, the, in the how great the time is for them right. and because they are an important part of our country mm -hmm. and we need to respect and acknowledge that. That's interesting. That regard, yes. This afternoon, I think that, um, no, this morning we had yes. some statement that um, the, uh, the founder leader of the party is actually meeting an association. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I think somewhere, I think the Melvin Picker Ambassador will tell this was part of the series of meetings he's been holding, right? True. With um, in, what's called interested, interest groups. With identifiable groups. Identifiable groups. Yes. What's the thinking? What's, why, why is he doing this? No, the thinking is that it's important that stakeholders are engaged across the country. And so as far as uh, you are Ghanaian grouping, whose stakeholder contribution toward the development of the nation is quite fundamental, it's important that Honorable Alan Chermantin engages you because he believes that all stakeholders are key to the, to the development process. So from drivers to, to nurses to teachers to doctors to, to, to artisans, Honorable Alan Chermantin has made it a point that he's going to engage every single identifiable group in the country and on two fronts. Firstly, to, to listen, to inform them on, on his intention to contest the presidency, which he is. And secondly, to get their opinions and contributions as to how they believe this nation can be driven on the right path of progress. Okay. And also, he will share with them his vision, mm -hmm. particularly within what he calls the Great Transformational Plan. Right. It is a model for development that he has proposed um, for the development of our dear nation. This Great Transformational Plan is a plan but it's actually a major plank of um, yeah, Ala Chermatin's vision of industrializing this country. Um, when you listen, first of all, how are you gauging whether the citizenry is actually embracing um, this plan? Do they even understand what this mm. plan is all about? How are, you, how, are you, how are you finding that, how are you measuring, yeah. you know, the citizens' engagement and participation, understanding generally of this plan? So it's important that okay. this conversation is had within the limits of um, the five thematic conversations that define the movement for change. Sure. So the five uh, that, firstly, it's important that we go beyond the duopoly to break the kind of divisive politics that defines our very country. 
and because Ghanaians are fed up with established parties, the NPP and the NDC, because in their existing structural forms, they do not represent the interests of our country. Secondly, it's important that we discuss the need to build what we call a government of national unity. And I always tell people that this is something I reflect from what Lee Kuan Yew of Singapore said, that we must have our very best men in, in our governance architecture. So Nabu Alain Chamatin believes that it's important that we bring together different stakeholders from different backgrounds. For as far as you have character, you have integrity, you have competence, then you should be a part of his government architecture. That your ability to contribute to the national discourse should not be based on whether you have a party card because you're a Ghanaian. And competence should be the defining so metric. Ghana first. Ghana, Ghana first, essentially, Ghana first. Okay. The third one is that we need to move beyond what we call a manifesto right. and move towards having a plan. Mm. And that is where the conversation about the Great Transformational Plan comes in. Okay. So he says that over the years, politicians in election year will come and sing songs of certain manifestos that do not have detail. As far as they think they, have fine, they, they are fine-tuned to the ears of Ghanaians, then they sing it. So you have the NDC and John Mahama saying that 24-hour uh, economy without giving a blueprint, without giving us the structural measure within which he will, he will make sure that it happens. And he forgets that in places like Sydney, right. where they have a 24-hour economy within the city of Sydney, it is an industrial economy in right. Sydney. It is the infrastructure architecture within Sydney that has propelled the 24-hour economy. Mm. So the 24-hour economy is a resultant process of industrialization right. and the provision of infrastructure services mm. that support same. Right. If you don't have a plan for that, you don't discuss 24-hour economy as a mantra. Right. So Alan says that I'm providing you a comprehensive plan that should become a blueprint for the development of our country. Right. And because he says that within policy conversations, you must answer certain questions. The first is, what is your policy? Why this policy? How will you implement the policy? How will you even fund the policy? What are the potential challenges of the policy? And how will you rectify them? We need to respect Ghanaians by providing these, these metrics, whatever proposition we have, something that the MPP and the NDC do, do not have. Only Alan Tremanti provides that. So he provides a comprehensive measure of industrialization. He provides solutions as to how we can provide loan-free infrastructure provisions for our DNA nation without necessarily resorting to loans from, from the Chinese or from, from, the, from the IMF, as we've been doing. So these are things that ordinarily will give you the output of a 24-hour economy in, 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 in that, that regard. Right. So these comprehensive measures is what distinct Alan Chairman from any other candidate in these elections. Comprehensiveness and respect for Ghanaians that Ghanaians are not dumb. Mm. Ghanaians want process, they want structure, they want war thought of measures that they can actually identify with. Don't come and sing slow slogans and you think that Ghanaians respectfully will follow, foolishly follow you every four years. Right. So the movement was formed in September last year. Um, and since then, he's been engaging. Yes. He's also, like you said, he's been visiting, you know, some strategic places like the market. Mm. We've seen some walk, um, um, what do you call it? Is it health walks? Yes, uh, the Afrofronto walk. Afrofronto walk, yes. exactly. We've also seen some volunteer activation. Mm. And the last time I checked, I think I, I saw about some 15,000 in Kumasi, the Ashanti region alone. I don't know the numbers have gone up. I want to know, so two things. What numbers are you beginning to recall in terms of the number of people who are showing interest in joining the movement? That's number one. Mm. Two, what, I mean, most of the political parties by now have, mm. will tell you that they are working on their manifesto. And so they intend to launch the money manifesto in a few months, a few months down the line. The NDC has a running mate. The MPP will says they will choose a running mate before the end of April. What timelines is the movement for change um, working with? You know, that's I think that's that for me is the is the, is, the, is the focus of my question. What timelines are you working with? So I think so people can actually the, monitor and follow what you're doing. I think the defining trait of the movement for change is that we have been very unpredictable okay. in how we have engaged. Okay. And you're deliberate about it? And you're deliberate about it. Uh, because when you are going to war with, with an established system, uh, being predictable can be quite chaotic for you. And so what I will tell you is that be patient, and trust me, uh, we know what we are doing. And at the right time, all these things will unfold as to what we are doing and, and what you've done already. So um, you talked about the volunteer program, for yes. example. In our records, we have over, one, over 100,000 people who have really? signed up officially and are, are boots on grounds engaging households across the country. 
I see. We have, we have over 200,000 people who largely said that, listen, we are for the movement, have us in your system, and we are showing you that we are part of your people here and there. And gradually, we are making sure that we are activate them to be part of our on-ground boots, our people guys who are boot boots on the grounds. So what can I, I can tell you is that Ghanaians are tired of the geopoly. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians believe that, especially young people, believe that it is time for change. Mm -hmm. And it is a change that they identify with Honorable Alan Shemantin, especially because of his track record. Mm -hmm. Because Ghanaians will not just buy into anybody. It is about how distinct you are, how unique your character is, how unique your persona is. Because the leadership of this country is within the limits of the executive presidency. Right. Also, they understand that the reflective dynamics on the character of the president has an extensive effect on all his lieutenants in general and how the entire leadership trajectory runs across the country. Right. So when you elect a man who, who is historically and has a track record of competence and has character and integrity, a man whom you cannot pinpoint any single allegation of corruption against throughout his career in politics or in private service. That is a man that young people in this country want to go for. And it's been reflective in exactly how young people are buying into the, the movement for You're change. You're saying that young people are getting, are becoming attracted to the party, they're signing up, they're volunteering, they're doing door-to-door, -door, yeah. house to house, you know, and trying to convince people to join the movement and so on. Do these people also include people who are non-Christians? Because um, your leader is saying that Ghanaians must vote for somebody who is a Christian and a Christ-like person. So if I'm not a Christ-like person, I'm not a Christian, what business do I have joining the movement for change? So I will answer your question in two folds. Yes. The first is that, shockingly, just yesterday, we've had over 100, a grouping of over 100 Muslims approach the campaign that they want to be an active part of our campaign process. After what Alan Chamartin said? Exactly. I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. Secondly, there are key people in our campaign process. We have Dr. Ramsey, we have Honorable Boniface Sadiq, who are Muslims, who are key parts of our campaign. These are people who are within the central architecture of how our campaign runs. So it tells you that the propaganda that is meant to instigate Honorable Alan Chamartin, instigate Muslims against Honorable Alan Chamartin, is no wonder watch. But then let me come to the conversation on the statement of Honorable Alan Chamartin. Mm -hmm. I think that, generally, the propagandists have not been fair to certain political elements, including our father, the vice president, Alaji Baumia. They, they, they've not been fair to him. And I'll tell you why they've not been fair, fair to him. They've not been fair to him because just somewhere last year, the vice president made, made a statement when he met a, a Muslim grouping. He said that they are his brothers and that he has been selected as a candidate for the MPP because he's a Muslim and that he needs to represent Muslims. He had met his brother's Muslims, and he was appealing to his brother's Muslims. And I, I, don't, I don't find anything wrong with that, mainly because he has met his family, his brothers, he's talking to them. Honorable mm. Lanche Martin goes to church, meets his brothers, Christians, and tells them that, my brothers, let us elect someone who has the values that are Christ-like, the values of, of, of sympathy, the values of transformation, the values of, of being, being vision-led, the, the, the values of integrity. These are values that we should look up to when we are assessing who we elect as the next prince of this country. And then the propagandists who think that they've caught Honorable Alan Chamartin in the corner goes out there and make noise about it. It is unfair to him that, or to any Christian, that I meet my brother's Christians and I appeal to them, just as I'll meet my, my fellow classmen all my, my, my fellow people in my ethnic group, I said, oh, listen, I'm an Akan. I've come to engage you. Your brother, your son has come to see you. Support your, your son in general. Or even not so, support someone who has the values of being an Akan or an Ashanti. It is not anti the tribal. You're only appealing to the values that they hold, that those values should be guiding principles. But also, quite importantly, when someone puts himself out there as a candidate, he puts there out there his identity as a person, his character and his persona. Alan Tremantin is an Anglican, he's a Christian. He's a man who has enormous faith in Christ Jesus. I'm with him most of the time, so understand how he puts a lot of value and emphasis on his faith in Christ Jesus. So he says that this is who I am. I am your brother. But let the values of Christ, don't just elect me because I'm a Christian, but assess whether I have the values that define a Christian, the Christ-like values, and assess me by that metric. So what Christians will do then is that they will take the leading candidates, John Dramani Mahama, Father John Dramani, the former president, 
they will take the, our father, the vice president, Elijah Mahmoud Bamiya. But they will take our father, um, His Excellency, uh, the Honorable Alain John Kodi and assess them based on these values mm. and make a judgment. What is wrong with this? But, but clearly, the vice president is not a Christian. The vice president, well, I'm not, I mean, it's debatable with whether you say he, had, he has a Christ like, I mean, because I don't know what that Christ like character, I don't know what that means. Maybe Allah Chairman himself would explain to us what that means. But clearly, what in essence he's saying that if sitting here, I look at a candidate, and the candidate is first of all not a Christian, um, so let's say I'm a Hare Krishna, um, I am a, I'm a Sikh, I am, um, what's the name of this guy, what's the name, uh, uh, a Hindu, etc., etc. I don't share the same faith with a Christian community. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is Allah Chermatin telling me that I should, I, should, I should not vote for somebody? Or I should, oh, sorry, I should actually vote. For, okay, so I'm, he's telling Christians that they should look out for somebody who shares in their faith and vote for them. If the person doesn't share in their faith, what should they do mm -hmm. to that person? Not vote for them? So I think that the emphasis within okay. the media space have been a bit erroneous okay. and i need to correct that okay please do so his emphasis has been on having christ-like attributes not necessarily a christian the qualities of christ and they are ones that i would defend any day i am not ashamed run us through these qualities you're talking about being a servant-like leader uh -huh. uh, a man of integrity uh -huh. transformation uh -huh. having vision uh -huh. being compassionate oh so this is what he means this is what he means so essentially he is telling Ghanaians that Assess. Not necessarily someone who speaks in tongues. No, not necessarily. Or goes to church every Sunday. Because there are Christians, you might, someone will call him, can call himself a Christian, but the person might not necessarily be Christ-like. Yeah, yeah well, that's true. That's true. So we need to like, assess these yeah. very... So, so, and it is a see that once you're a Christian and you're professing the values that define you, then you come under attack in this country. No! As, as a believer, as will a Christian... It, will it have made matters a bit better? If you had gone beyond saying that the person must vote for somebody who's a Christian and somebody who's Christ-like by saying that the person must have these attributes. The person it, must be this, must be that, must be this, must be that. Then there's some clarity. It, 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 Otherwise, interestingly, I, can, inter I can interpret Interestingly, it. this clarity you are asking for yes. was very clear in the video that is being shown. Well, I mean, well, jo so, Josiah, so, so, the video is ready. Please, let's play. play. But, uh, if you yes, play the entirety like, of yes. the video, he, he, he talked, he he talked about, about it. it. He spoke at length. Okay. And he, so he was with his brothers and sisters. Yeah. Listen, let us look at the values of Christ. Right. And let us exemplify these values. Mm. These are values that we should look up to when we are deciding who should be our leader. Isn't that because Alan Chamath is a Christian? Let's assess him on those values. And are these values that, that as Christians, we think are defining traits of a leader? The answer is yes. So essentially, what you're saying is that you disagree with people who say this, it, this amounts to religious bigotry. Listen, not, not when Lancha Martin was with, was with the chief chief imam a week or two ago, after respectfully the chief imam's wife passed on. He was with the chief imam. Okay. He, he, has, he, has, an, he has a great relationship with the Muslim community. Your biggest critic of what the president, sorry, the, the uh, Mr. Alan Martin said, is actually key members of the New Patriotic Party. They have been the most critical of what the, uh, the, the uh, Allah Chairman has said, the Honorable Allah Chairman has said. And I'm going to read to you something that Allah B, who's the national organizer of the party, said. He says, Chief Allah Chairman so as a predominantly Christian nation, and as Christians, it is our responsibility. So he's, first of all, quoting what Allah Chairman said. I never expected such a reckless, irresponsible, dangerous, religiously intolerant statement from a respected man like Alan. So can he visit a predominantly Muslim community and ask them to vote for him? Can he visit Chief Imam and ask him for his blessings? Chief Alan is clearly saying a Muslim is not fit to become president or fit to be president. May the good Lord bless Chief, Chief Alan with long life to witness the presidency of His Excellency al Haj Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. His Excellency Baumia, by the grace of God, will be the first Muslim president of Ghana. He is religiously tolerant and a respecter of all faith. How do you let respond me, to this? Let me say this emphatically. You read the statement and you realize that within the limits of the explanation I've given you, such a statement can only come from the realms of ignorance. 
You, you mean you mean Nanabi is ignorant? Of course. If you if you make a statement that a man who appeals to the conscience of his brothers and sisters and asks them to take a, make a metric based on price likeness is one that is reckless and use words uh, unprintable words. You use unprintable words yeah. against the person and character of an animal and chairman. Then surely you are, you are being ignorant. And, and I, I, I say that without any regret about it. Be ignorant blatantly. Secondly, I said earlier on that there is, it is an indirect attack on the vice president, Alaji Mahum Baumia. But Alaji the vice president, has clearly, on different platforms, appealed to his own brothers, the Muslims. So is that to say that the vice president is reckless? He's divisive? So you see, realize that it is counterintuitive. It is highly logical. For, if you follow the train of thoughts of, of, of my, 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 my brother and Anabi, very logical. Because if that is the case, then you just call the vice president reckless. Well, a man who is intolerant and divisive. Mm. But the fact that a man wants to appeal to his brothers is not one that we should, we should in any way negate. Onambo Lachemantin was not even in any way saying that, listen, let's go against our brothers Muslims. He's saying that his persona is one that values the Christ-likeness within the church. Those values define him. That is who he is. He's a Christian. Whether we like it or not, he's not going to stop his belief in God. Okay. Those, those, that's, that very identity is one that has led him to believe in the Christ-like values. Mm. And these are the values that he aspires to. And so if he's running as president, when he becomes president, as a Christian, these are values that will be his guiding principles. Let us decide on the next point of this country by using that as a metric. If you disagree on that metric, then you bring your metric and we assess it. Or you can then assess your own candidate based on those in that metric and show us how your candidate meets those metrics. But those are metrics that are universal. Those are metrics that any level thinking Ghanaian mm. will say will be transformative for our country. Listening to you, what it means is that you would ignore the call by the director of communications of the NPP, Richard Herba, who says Alan Chermanting, Alan Chermanting should retract and apo first of all apologize. So retract and apologize for a statement. Clearly, you're not going to do anything about it because. You have justified, Moro. you have explained what Alan Moro. intended to say. Moro, let me say this emphatically. Honorable, Honorable Alan Chermatin yes. will not apologize for professing his faith as a Christian. Honorable, you say today, you say, you I'll, say tomorrow. I'll say today, I'll say tomorrow. Honorable Alan Chermatin will not apologize for asking Ghanaians to aspire to the Christ like life. Honorable Alan Chermatin will not apologize for boldly proclaiming Christ. Just about a, few, a, few, a month ago, Mr. Benihin was in Kenya yes. for a crusade. Yes. And the, the president of Kenya, Uhuru, um, William Ruto, yes. was on the platform where he picked the mic and said that he received a prophecy from Benihin years ago about him becoming president. And he declared Christ. He said he believes in Christ Jesus. The comments on social media within the East African space was a lot of shock by people that, wow, the president is clearly declaring his faith in Christ Jesus. That, that was a surprise to them. Because to them, it is rare for politicians to openly declare their faith out of the fear of a, back, a certain level of backlash. That shouldn't be the case. If you are a Muslim, be proud of your faith and defend it. Alan Chermantin is a Christian. He believes in the Christ-like principles, being guiding principles and leadership of this country. And he will not apologize for that today or tomorrow. Let's talk about one other thing that uh, also marks a significant milestone as far as your quest to build one of the most formidable movements in this country is concerned. And it has to do with the alliance you recently just entered with the National Interest Movement. How long has, been, has this been on the table and what was the thought processes that went into this? Why did you think that it was necessary to, to enter into an alliance with another political movement? And is that to sort of is that a tacit admission that you realize that you can't do it alone, and so you need the support of another political movement? And who initiated it? You did, or they did? <laughs> so let me let me say that um, firstly, for the young people of, uh, in the movement for change, we are grateful for Nabo Lanchermanton for so many things. But key among them is the fact that he's a listening father. He says that he's a transitional leader who will hand over power and authority to young people in this country. 
And so he has listened, he has, for every step of the way, listened to us young people. And so our advice to Honorable Alan Chairman was that, listen, sir, in order for us to establish the fact that we are really going to form a government of national unity, we must bring on board different stakeholders as a symbolic show, number one, as a symbolic show of the, the fact that we really mean business, number one. But secondly, it means that we are bringing on board the diversity that defines this very country in principle. And so that became the metric there. And he listened to us. Thankfully, a lot of interest groupings and political organizations have noticed the prominence of the movement for change. And a lot has reached out. And we also reached out to a number of them. So it's been both ways. And conversation started as far back last year. But that, that, that is why I, I keep on telling you that we are having a submarine operation, one that we are highly unpredictable. And so we've been in several conversations with, over the, the past, since the, the latter part of last year, engaging different groupings who are also engaging us at different fronts of conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, most people think it's just a national interest movement. But um, when we launched the alliance on the 7th of April, you understand that it is a coming together of, of key strategic interest groups across the country. It is a show of force that Ghanaians are in for change. It is a show of force that we are willing to bring on board people, no matter your background, that people of diverse interest groups, irrespective of whether you are a Muslim or a Christian, let me emphasize that, whether you are an Ever, a Nordner, an Akan, a Fanti, no matter where you are from in this country, people from those diverse, who define that diversity are a part of this alliance. We will, we will show to you clearly that this is an alliance that has a comprehensive plan towards the 2024 elections and beyond. And so I assure you that it's, it's a comprehensive process. It is not just, just an alliance that we, we just went to bed and when woke up dreaming about it here and there, but it's one that has- So has you're, not, you're not building for 2024. You're looking beyond 2024. Are you, you know what, I, let me put it, let me, maybe let me rephrase. Are you building this movement because you're confident that you'll win the 2024, 2024 elections? Or you're saying that this is for the future? You're, the target is not necessarily 2024. We're not going to say 2028 or 2032. What is it? What are, you, what are you doing? Our target, which I assure you will happen, mm -hmm. will come to fruition, is that Honorable Alan Chermantin in January 2025 will be sworn in as the president of this country. That is our target. And beyond that target is a conversation of having an architecture or a team that represents the diversity of this country to run the affairs of this country. And that is what you but, see the alliance Ghana, mobilized upon. But Ghana and Ghanaians don't seem to be excited about trying something outside of the two traditional political parties. I don't know how, I don't know why you're so confident that this time around the Ghanaians that, that would is, want to do that. That is a conversation within the lips of a few men who believe that they might have a platform to engage. So they keep on attempting to undermine the movement. But you're saying that, movement. you're saying it's not true. What I'm telling you is that- It's changing. Is that it's not changing. It has already changed. And so when we say an alliance for revolutionary change, it is the manifestation of a call for change for Ghanaians across the country. It is a manifestation of a call for Ghanaians across every corner of this country, saying that they need a visionary leader, a Christ-like leader, a leader of competence and credibility, a leader who is transformative, who will bring revolutionary change to this country. And it's based on that call that the Alliance for Revolutionary Change is being built. A change that will bring on board people from diverse backgrounds to kick against the geopoly in principle. And what I assure you, if I may land, is that come December 7th, it's a revolution that cannot in any way be handled by the establishment. And this is not some wishful thinking. This is not wishful thinking. This is some kind of a pie dream. This, this is, this is. You this see, is, this is. We, we've, we've been on, on a market tours over the past two months. We, we've been to the, to the Greater Accra region. We've visited the North Market Greater Accra region. We've been to the Central region. We've been to the Volta region. We've been to the Eastern region. We'll soon be visiting another region. And the comprehensive conversation is that we have been waiting for you. They tell you that? We have been waiting for you. It's not what they tell us. It's about the information on the ground. It's the reality on the ground. Just get out of the studio. Walk on the streets. Ask the market women. Ask the ordinary people what they are looking forward to. Whether they have any iota of trust for the established parties, for the NDC or the MPP. The, vice president, the, the former president, John Mahama, was in power for six years as president. 
before that he was a vice president. What did he do for this country? What was the state of our economy? The vice president has been vice president no, no, on, no, no, on no, numerous no, promises. We need to set the record, so not six years, because he took over in 2012, July to 2012. Let's say four years, six months, not, not six years. No, yeah, but, Ju July to 2012. Ju yeah. July, July 2012 to, yeah, to December. And we had and election, elections. We election in 2016. Yes. So, so four so years, analysis. six months, yes. We are, we are, not, not six years. I mean, four years, six months. Yeah. No, respectfully. To, to be fair to no. <laughs> So, no, you can say, no, for five years, six months, and that basically gives you six years, basically. No, 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 no. It's four no. years, six months. He took over in 2014. In July 2012. No, Remember? No. No, that was the... No, I'm referring to respectfully. I'm referring to the, the former president, John Mahama. Yes. John Mahama became... President, vice president, vice president yes. 2012. Yes. I'm referring to his presidency. Yes. He took over from the, the late former president, yes. Arthur Mills, yes. when in he passed on, in 20, passed on in 2014. 2012. No, the, 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 four years. Yes. And then did, and then finished. Oh, thank you for your analysis. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so basically, <laughs> that. No, I know about this understanding. So, so basically, so basically, yeah. it's, it's so so for four years. years four and a half years. Four and a half years, basically. Plus a number of years, basically, in that regard. But within the point is that he's been president before. And within his tenure as president, we've seen what he's done. Okay. What was the state of the country? Right. In principle. We've seen the vice president in office, a man who who claims who claims every good, good, good thing he says in this government, then calls himself a, a, a mate in, in, in the government, trying to you know distance himself from from whatever rot he perceives in the in the very government in question. So we send them, and the Ghanaians are tired of whatever contribution that they've done in this. Let country. me ask you something, and you do, just just a quick one, yeah. but based, still based on this alliance for change yes. thing. You know that same day when the the announcement came. I think that perhaps later that day or the, for the following day, you issued a statement. Mm -hmm. And Josiah, the, the statement is ready. Let's put it up on the screen. Uh, because you, you, you felt it was necessary to issue a statement to set the record straight on, on, on an issue. Oh. Yes. Now, this is the statement. It says, and this is 16th February 2024, press release, the attention of the leadership of the movement for change has been drawn to a propaganda piece that seeks to create a false narrative of collaboration between Ala Chermanteng and one of the political geopoly. The message of the movement, sorry, the movement remains that the existing political geopoly of the MPP and NDC in no way represents the interests of this country. The MPP and the NDC and the current forms continue to undermine the progress of the country and are no longer representative of the ideals of progress and prosperity that define the Ghanaian people. It's the duty of every Ghanaian in defense of the constitution mm -hmm. and the interest of economic prosperity for all to vote for Alachir as president in 2024. So essentially saying that this is not, so because we're still talking about the alliance, yeah. you're, not saying, you're saying that this is not, what were we seeking to, what, what were we seeking to, well, so, uh, to communicate? Well, uh, so a this, communique came out from a said NDC group in Ashanti region, okay. um, sending caution out to who are said to be sending a caution to the NDC leadership that they should end any form of alliance with Alan Chairman in the Shanti region. Clearly, our investigation noted that even the contact numbers of the people who assigned that very document uh, were people who were based in the voter region. And so, and, and people who we did not even know that that kind of doc, um, statement had come out. And so we had to dispel any form of propaganda piece that sought to undermine Alan Chairman's roles in, roles in, in the Shanti region. The establishment have noticed that Alan Chairman controls the Shanti region now. He is a force, the force in the Ashanti region. He controls the Ashanti region. Honorable Alan Chermantin is the, the, the MPP is, controls the Ashanti region. Well, they, they have their wishes in place. But Honorable Alan Chermantin, factually, is a man of the people in the Ashanti region. Really? Because the Ashanti people are looking for a man who understands how there, is a, there will be a growth in business, a man who understands the very tenets of trade, a man who has credibility and character, a man that they identify with weight what on his track record. And his name is Alan Chermantin. And trust me, they, 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 they have the information of themselves. They, they, they know it. They are aware that Alan Chermantin will win the Ashanti region in these elections. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much for your time. It's, um, I've been talking to, just in case you joined us, I've been talking to Duke Aaron Sasu, who is the public, in fact, is a spokesperson for the Movement for Change, which is uh, the movement that's, uh, whose leader and founder is uh, Chief Ala, Alan uh, John Kojo Chermantin. He's been talking to us and giving us an update on what the movement is about. Talk about some alliance with the National Interest Movement and also the talk about voting for a Christian and also a Christ-like person. He sort of clarified and set the record straight on that.
Uh, so what are we going to hear from Alan, just briefly? Uh, is he doesn't have any intentions of holding any news conference or any... Oh, respectfully, um, the, the, lunch, oh, so the, the, the lunch of the Alliance on the 17th. Oh, 17th, okay. Month. We'll hear from him. Yes. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> that's it for Good Afternoon Ghana. I want to say a big thanks to Josiah, who's the producer for the show, and also all the technical crew, Jesse, and the rest of you for um, supporting um, the live broadcast of this program. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.